I'm a child of the Kaguan Tan and a grandchild of the Duck Dane Tan. And I'm 19 years old. I'm an alcoholic. My mother drank 90 to 100 days during pregnancy, so I live with many of my own FASDs. I have both physical and neurological disabilities. I have spina bifida occulta, scoliosis, a mucus cleft palate. My eyes focus at two separate times. I have other sensory integration problems. I have deformed hips. I have many learning disabilities. I have short-term memory. I have the cognitive skills of a four-year-old. I have the overall brain development of an 11-year-old. It's not easy living with my FASD. It's not just for me, but for my grandparents because they're with me every step of the way. They're my external brain. They work with me and they help me be successful. I had no clue that I was struggling because parts of my brain didn't develop. I was struggling because my body didn't develop right. So I felt, simply felt stupid. But the more I read, the more I realized I wasn't stupid. The more I read, the more I understood why I did or didn't think in certain ways, why I did or didn't understand certain subjects. And that was huge. It was like a thousand pounds was lifted off my shoulders. I can't tell you how many times people said to me, well, I don't want to label my child. We don't want to have a diagnosis because that's just going to be saying that they have a problem. Well, denial doesn't help, but acceptance and knowing that you have a disability, is know where you lie, not only brings relief, but it also gives you a base of where you need help. Knowing and understanding where your deficits lie helps you build upon your strengths. My mother drank during pregnancy. But just because she drank during pregnancy doesn't make her a bad person. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of not understanding FASD. And there's a stigma placed on mothers. And when I go out and when I speak, I always emphasize when it comes to fetal alcohol, they're only victims, never perpetrators. Because we're all affected by FASD. My mother has to live with the pain of knowing that her actions hurt all of her children. Even with my disabilities, because I have support, because we're doing things differently, I become profoundly successful. <clears throat> right now, at this point, I'm a 4.0 student. First time in my life, in college, because we were able to adapt my learning style to my coursework. While I, we know and realize that it takes me longer to do something, that's okay. I can work steady for a few days, but after that I need rest. Because there just comes a point where my brain no longer functions. It's put out so much energy, put out so much focus that it just stops. For some people they can work a full week, they can work a full work day. I can't do that. I can put out enough, infer uh, enough energy to last a day, but after two to three days, that's it. It's really important that I have support because when I have a meltdown, when my brain has given everything it can give, I literally can't function. I don't remember to eat. I, don't, I can't make any decisions. I couldn't tell you the difference between red and blue. It just gets so bad. I become so tired that I actually lose the ability to feel. So having somebody there, having my grams or my grandfather there to help me out, to make sure that I eat, whether that means asking me if I want to eat something or simply putting food in front of my face and say, eat, that is very important. And while it doesn't appear that I have difficulties because of my articulation, because I present well, there's a lot that underlies beneath my ability to articulate. With realizing that I need help and acknowledging that I need help, there's also the feeling of not being able to be independent. Even though, yes, it can be hard to think about how hard would life be without the help? Where would I be without the help? I certainly wouldn't be where I am today. I certainly wouldn't be 
able to help so many people. I wouldn't have met the President of the United States without the help of my family and knowing that I need that help. I could speak hours and hours upon this subject, but when I want to talk to somebody about the importance of not drinking during pregnancy, and one point that I really have to emphasize is that no amount of alcohol is safe. I don't care what a doctor is willing to say. There are a lot of doctors out there that are willing to support drinking during pregnancy. When it comes to our next generations, we need to do anything and everything within our power to ensure a healthy pregnancy. And that is my biggest message. What's more important to you? A few moments of fun? or the life of another person. I would never tell somebody that they can't drink during pregnancy. That's their human rights. You can do whatever you want with your body. But whenever I speak at any facilities, high schools, middle schools, medical facilities, rehab centers for both youth and adults, correction centers, I always ask one single question. Do you feel you have the right to harm another human being? Is one night of drinking or one glass of wine with dinner worth the pain of another human being? Is it worth having a child like me who has so many problems, who has so many struggles in their day-to-day -day life that it's actually worth having a little bit of alcohol?